Again, Quran 33, verse 60. Truly, if the hypocrites, those in whose hearts is a disease, those who stir up sedition, the agitators in the city, do not desist, we shall urge you, Muhammad, to go up against them and to set you over them. Then they will not be able to stay as your neighbor for any length of time. They shall have a curse on them. Wherever they are found, they shall be seized and slain without mercy, a fierce slaughter, murdered, a horrible murdering. Such was the practice approved of Allah among those who lived before, and no change wilt thou find in the practice of Allah. Now you know why Muslim suicide bombers in Iraq terrorize their own, killing scores of people with their bombs every day. Allah himself was a confessed murderer. He is a savage and merciless terrorist. According to this surah, he is insatiable. And keep in mind, the crime that earned Allah's wrath, the ungodly seizure and torment, was sedition and agitation. If you speak out against Islam's demonic teachings, you will be demonized. It's little wonder that 49 of the 50 least civil nations on earth are controlled by Islam and these scriptures. But Islam isn't the only doctrine that terrorizes those it cannot subdue. Hitler's Nazism, Lenin's Communism, and the Pope's Catholicism all did the same thing. Three of the four even claim to have divine authority for inflicting terror. But since we don't tolerate such behavior anymore, why do we tolerate Islam? The Quran just ordered Muslims to seize, terrorize, and brutally murder anyone who disagrees with them. The agitators have a curse on them. When they are found, they will be seized and slain without mercy. That's an unconscionable position, one completely incompatible with peace or civility. Before we move on, I'd like to make another important distinction. The inspiration for the intolerance and brutality of Islam, Nazism, and Communism is markedly different than that of medieval Catholicism. With Islam, Nazism, and Communism, the founders themselves were the problem. Their religious texts were born ugly. Mohammed, Hitler, and Lenin were disgusting, demented, deceitful, power-hungry demagogues. The Catholic clergy had to corrupt the Messiah's message to justify their brutality. In fact, they had to hide Yeshua's message, outlawing Bibles and sermons in the common tongue to perpetrate their ill-advised schemes. However, if one sees Constantine, not Christ, as Catholicism's founder, all four religious texts become identical. This may be why Pope John Paul II bowed to and kissed a Quran publicly, acknowledging his respect for it in front of cameras. It is why item number 841 in the Catholic Catechism says, quote, The Church's relationship with Muslims, the plan of salvation, also includes those who acknowledge the Creator, in the first place among whom are Muslims. They profess to hold the faith of Abraham, and together with us adore the one merciful God, mankind's judge, on the last day. End of quote. Such ignorance makes me want to cry and scream all at the same time. Marching ever toward hell, the Quran proclaims, Quran 33:64. Verily, Allah has cursed the unbelievers, whom He defines as Christians in the fifth surah, and has prepared for them a blazing fire to dwell in forever. No protector will they find, nor savior. That day their faces will be turned upside down in the fire. They will say, Woe to us! We should have obeyed Allah and obeyed the Messenger. Our Lord give them double torment and curse them with a very great curse. That's quite a picture. Allah is threatening to turn us upside down and rub our faces in the fire while Muhammad screams, Give them a double dose of torment. Curse them! Something tells me that this really isn't God speaking, and Muhammad really isn't a prophet. But hey, all I've got to go by are their scriptures. 
The next verse requires some explanation. Allah said, In Quran 33, 69, Believers, be not like those who annoyed Moses. Allah proved his innocence of that which they alleged. The allegation isn't presented in the Quran. Allah simply moves on. So I'd like to share a moment of levity. Had Allah really been Yahweh, this is what you would have read in the Torah. Bukhari Allah's apostles said, The prophet Moses was a shy person and used to cover his body. An Israeli insulted him, saying, He covers it because of some defect like leprosy or scrotal hernia. Allah wished to clear Moses of this allegation, so one day he took off his clothes, put them on a stone, and started taking a bath. When he moved toward his clothes, the stone took them and fled. Moses picked up his staff and ran after the stone, saying, O oh stone, give me back my clothes. He reached some Israelis who saw him naked, and found him to be the best of what Allah had created. The stone stopped there, and Moses took his garments and started hitting the stone with his stick. By Allah, the stone still has some traces of the hitting three, four, or five marks. This was what Allah meant when he revealed the surah, saying, O you who believe, be you not like those who annoyed Moses. Allah proved his innocence of that which they alleged. I vote we keep the Ten Commandments in the Bible instead. The Allied Troops surah ends with Allah proclaiming that men were actually his fourth choice, and that we are foolish and ignorant tyrants. Quran 3372, we did indeed offer the opportunity to the heavens, the earth, the mountain, but they refused to take it, being afraid of Allah's torment. But man undertook it. He was unjust and foolish. Lo, he has proved a tyrant and a fool, ignorant. Allah has to punish the hypocrites, men and women, and the unbelievers. The 33rd surah, in and of itself, is sufficient to prove that Islam is a fraud, an intolerant, immoral, and vicious scheme that must be condemned. Returning to the Hadith, we find Muhammad out terrorizing his neighbors. Evil is as evil does. Tabari and Ishak in the fourth year of the Islamic era, the prophet led a raid against Dumat Janda, because the word had reached him that they had approached his territories. This brings us to the Battle of the Trench. Tabari, what brought on the battle, according to what has been reported, was related to the expulsion of the Banu Nadir from their settlements by Allah's apostle. Ishak, the account of the trench is as follows. A group of Jews were the ones who assembled parties against the messenger. They went to the Quraysh in Mecca and invited them to rid themselves of Muhammad. They said, We will be with you against him until we root him out. While it's easy to understand why the Jews who had been harassed, besieged, cast out of their ancestral homes, and looted, might have been miffed at our illustrious prophet. Their offer couldn't have been credible to the Quraysh. Since they hadn't lifted a finger to defend themselves against Muhammad's aggression, how were they going to assist others? Tabari. The Quraysh said, Jews, you are a people of the first scripture, and you have knowledge about the subject on which we and Muhammad have come to differ. Is our religion better than his? Your religion is better, they said. You are closer to the truth than he. Based upon what we have read in the Hadith and Quran, that wasn't saying much. Voodoo is closer to the truth than Islam. Ishak, they are the ones concerning whom Allah revealed, Have you not seen those to whom a portion of the scripture has been given? They believe in idols and false deities. They say, These are more rightly guided than those who believe, until the words, Hell is sufficient for their burning. They are jealous, and Allah has cursed them. This became Quran 4, verse 51. The fourth surah is packed with perversity, and it is as delirious as the thirty-third. Attributing idols and false deities to the Jews was one of the many incoherent thoughts mumbled by the rock idol who claimed to be the Jewish god.